Okay, guys. Uh, welcome back to part three of our uh, series, East uh, Fed Overview. Um, when we left uh, in part two, um, I was getting ready to show you how to archive a document. Um, and in this video, we'll show you how to archive, how to make the draft active, and then I'll show you where art invitations and consents are. Uh, so, um, as you can see, since our last video, um, I've updated, like I asked you to do, um, all PIMS errors are taken care of. It says PIMS zero errors found, which is what you want. Um, then I was in reports I had generated. I'll show you the difference. Um, in our previous video, I had PIMS errors, so when I generated the full art with supplements, it said in progress across the screen. Um, now that I've fixed those, I'm going to create this full art with supplements again. And give it a second, um, because if you remember from part one, we enabled hover and, and auto refresh and all those things in the profile, so it'll auto refresh for me. Now that it's done, I'll show you. I click view. And it will be slow, which is typical for a training. Now you can see I don't have in progress across there. I've got my R document, okay? So I've generated the report. In the, in the end of the last video, I showed you how to print, and I, I promised you I would show you how to archive. So from this screen, you can see I've got, here's my my completed full, an, full annual R with supplements, right? So I can just click my screen drop down and go from view prepared reports to archive prepared reports. When I do that, it's going to put it in a, a weird print date screen that the system does. If I click print date once, it should sort it. And then if I click print date again, it sorts it to most current. So here's the one that I just did. I can select type of archive, and you always want to make sure you put the type of archive. This is an annual ARN and I want it in the 2021-2022 school year, okay? Because that's what year we're in, right? Um, if I wanted to, I could add an archive comment. If not, I can leave that blank. Once I've got type of archive and what folder I want it to go to, which is very important, click archive, and it will disappear from this screen, and you're like, oh my God, where'd it go? I lost it. No, you didn't. If it's now archived in Billy BSS's archive folder. If you want to verify that, you can click next up here and it's running slow. You'll get to what's archived in this folder. If you ever get this screen, this has happened before, people panic um, and freak out, oh my god, all this stuff is gone. That's not the case. Hit search refresh if, it, if this happens. And now you can see I've got all of his archive documents. And I put it in the 2021-2022 school year and said it was an annual ARD. You can see it's archived there. Um, it tells me what's good here. I can see when it was started that it took me three years because it's a training kid to archive this. It tells me what date and time I archived it and who it was that archived this document. That is archiving. Um, it is that simple. I enjoy it. Um, if you go through print, the print archive button, it does the same thing, although it offers you an option to auto archive. My caution to you is to not use that print archive, or if you do, do not click the auto archive checkbox, because auto archive will automatically archive the document for you, and you haven't been able to proofread it and check and make sure that everything's good to go before you archive. That leads to more errors, which leads to a whole other process of putting it in an errors folder and trying to contact me to have it deleted. If you want to avoid that, just don't use Auto Archive. Proofread your stuff when you get it in a PDF before you archive it. So I'm not done. I've gone through my entire annual ARD. Um, I've got no PIMS errors, so I'm on the right track, right? I've archived it. I've printed out a copy and sent it to the parent. I have one last step, which is often forgotten. This still says draft, right? Well, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to make this draft active again. 
I'm going to go back to the screen uh, that we talked about in uh, part two of this series that is process draft record. If I do process draft record while I'm in a draft record, you're going to see that it says make draft active for Billy BSS. I'm going to say yes. It's Do I really want to make this the active record? And you absolutely do. Because um, you've checked it, your plafts, your goals, your deliberations, everything's there. You've printed a copy, gave it to the parent. you printed a copy to put in the student state folder. You're good to go. You have no PEAMS errors. Finish out your process. Make the draft active so that you don't get emails saying that this annual ARD looks like it's overdue. I click OK. It's going to take it a second. And then we are back to just the active record. So what it did, it took what I put in this draft, his new information, and replaced what was the old information in the old active record, made it the new information. So now I'm back down to one record, which is an active record. So I know that's a lot, and you're like, this is this is the beginning of the year. I'm not going to remember this. Um, please feel free to go back and watch the videos. Reach out to me in email. Um, that is how to... Uh, archive and how to make drafts active again. Um, now we're going to switch switch uh, lanes just a little bit and go into art invitations and consent where the consents are. So I'm going to navigate away from art forms and I'm going to go into the notices application, which you all have access to as well. It's going to give me my student select screen again. You can see little Billy's still here. If I wanted to find everybody, I can click View All, and it will give me, depending on my access, if I'm an LSSP diagnostician or speech pathologist, I have the whole district. If I'm a teacher or an art facilitator, I just have the campus I'm assigned to. But we got little Billy here again, and I'm going to keep picking on Billy. So the same situation applies. I, I have the hover. I can do all the same filters I showed you in Part 1. All that stuff still works. Um, but to get to the ARD invitation, I'm going to click the kid's name, say that I'm writing his IEP, and you'll notice this is student demographic page, student information page. This is all, this is the first page you get to no matter what application you click on. You want to make sure, again, this is the kid I, I was meaning to, to work in. If not, I'm going to click students and go back out to my student select screen. So let's say this is the right kid. I'm going to navigate down to Invitation to ARD Meeting 1. And what we've currently got is the the clerks fill the, these out typically, the, the invitation to the ARD meetings, our special education appraisal clerks, but they don't do that on their own. They don't make the decisions on that. They They take that guidance from you. So you've got to tell them who to invite, there are processes. If you're new, get with your mentor. Um, they can tell you how they run it on their campus. Um, I will tell you the expectation legally um, that we have to hold to is we have to give at least five days notice for the meeting. Um, we don't want to send an ARD notice home today and have the ARD tomorrow and the parent didn't waive five-day notice. And, and we can get more into that uh, when we meet in person um, and in future trainings, but they must go out at least five days prior to the date of the meeting. So you're going to go through. Your clerk will fill this out, but you would check whatever is appropriate. Um, if the student's 13 to 17, you, add this, you, you include the student. If you want to add a parent, you click this box here. But you're going to put the date that you sent it or mailed it home to the parent. Here you're going to put the date of the ARD meeting, what time the ARD meeting is, what room it's in, and the place, home, campus. You could click new and type in the name of your campus. Purpose of the meeting, you would check all that's appropriate. If you check other, please use this box and tell me who the, what the other purpose is. The following personnel or persons have been asked to attend the meeting. You check all that's appropriate. If you're trying to invite an outside agency because you're in high school, and you're inviting Texas Workforce Commission, the Harris Center, any of our post-secondary transition-type agencies, 
you can't do that without getting consent. This little button here would take you to a consent to invite outside agency. We have to have a signed parent or adult student consent in order to invite them. Uh, we can get more into that later. If you click other for other persons are going to be involved or asked to attend a meeting, please tell me who those other people are. Once I've done that, I'm going to click to screen two of the invitation. And this is screen 1A. You're not going to use this very re very regularly. This would be um, if, if attendance is not necessary or they're being excused. We have a whole process on who can and cannot be excused from an ARD and what must happen um, in order to do that within our handbook. Once again, I'm referencing our handbook. I encourage you to read that, um, find the section, um, but you would put the member, their name, their title, uh, the parent has to agree in writing and the date that they agreed, and it must be prior to the meeting. Um, same situation applies here, uh, but we get in more detail of that in our handbook. Um, if I've used this screen, I would click next. If not, I'd skip it by clicking next as well. I get to invitation to our meeting too. Um, a copy of the procedural safeguards was provided to, and please don't put parent of, please put the parent's name so that we know if it was mom, dad, auntie, aunt, uncle, grandpa, whoever it was, we have their name and what date you, you provided it. Did you send it home with this notice? What was the question? If you have questions, this is optional. They can contact. You can put your name, phone number, and email address. Um, you don't fill this out. Um, unless you're sending it home in another language. Um, this will populate if you fill out the first screen with the date of the meeting um, and who to return the form to. So do you want it to come back to the clerk, the LSSP, the diagnostician, speech pathologist, depending on on who the kid is, okay? So you staff name, position, school address, city, state, zip. The parent checks one of these. We don't pre-check it for them. They sign it, date it, and send it back. That is our invitation to meeting. Um, I click next, include the following invitation. This is where you're documenting how many times we've contacted the parent to attempt to schedule the meeting. Um, your clerks get more in-depth training on how and when and what to use this for. Um, once I'm done, I would click reports your clerks will be trained on this, how to generate that invitation to the ARD meeting and send that home. Um, the other thing that's located in notices before I run out of time is anytime we're going to evaluate a student uh, in an FIE, let's say it's OT, PT, some related service, counseling, anything like that, right? I need to complete my notice to evaluate. I'm going to fill it out here by putting the date I sent it, reason, is it an initial, reavowal, or special request by the ARD committee, um, what's proposed, check all that's appropriate. If I check another box, please explain. Um, but what other options were considered other than evaluation, why those options were rejected. I click next. If you've got a number here, it's one, two, and then there's a three. Um, areas of evaluation, you say yes. Do I need communicative status, like so uh, speech and language, health, motor abilities, emotional behavioral, sociological, um, intellectual and adaptive behavior. If I click next, once I fill those out, I've got academic performance or achievement, assistive technology, and any other factors that would be relevant. Evaluation should be completed by, if you're going to decide on a date, you put that date and make sure that it's done by that date. A copy of procedural safeguards is provided to please put the parent's name, not their title, on what date you can return it to. If you have any questions, you can select Debbie. You can put your name, your position, and your phone number. Um, if an interpreter was used, you would fill this out. That is the notice of evaluation. Those must go home and then be scanned and archived or saved and archived every time we do a notice of evaluation. That's very important for our auditing purposes. Along with the notice, I'm going to need a consent to evaluate. I can't evaluate if I don't have consent, right? It is called evaluation consent. In here, I'm going to put the date it was sent, 
who's the lead on the evaluation? Is it speech, diag? Who is it? Was it the 